We're gonna make Wiener Schnitzel today. Let's place one here. Have a little lemon on top. It's just so beautiful. So if you're ever in Salzburg, Hey guys and welcome to another one of my videos. So I know usually I do travel vlogs. That's not gonna change. However, since I didn't really do anything exciting this week, I didn't really vlog much. So, oh well, I'm actually going on a trip on Friday. So by the time this video goes up, I am in the middle of a trip, which is why I am actually doing something else for this video today. Some of you have actually requested that I do another cooking video. And I know I haven't done them a lot, but I do cook a lot. And I figured, since a lot of you are interested in Austria, why not show you something Austrian, like typical Austrian food that I would make if I would wanna impress someone who's visiting from a different country. So we're gonna make Wiener Schnitzel today. So in case you haven't heard that expression for it, translated, it's Wiener Schnitzel. It's like breaded meat, basically. And I'm gonna make some potato salad to go with the schnitzel, which is really good. And some of you keep telling me that I should include meals that are not that healthy, because usually I am big about eating healthy. I mean, honestly, I'm gonna make this in a sort of healthy way, so don't get me wrong, it's in no way healthy, but I'm not making it the worst possible meal it could be, right? <laughs> Let's get started. So here's what you're going to need. You're gonna have all the measurements and the recipe down below in the info box. So we need some potatoes, about two pounds of potatoes, which is about 800 grams. We need two onions. You can use red onions if you like, but I just have green ones here, so I'll use these ones. Then some sugar, just a little bit. Then we're gonna need some salt, some mustard, some oil. Rapeseed oil is my all choice. And some vinegar. I almost forgot about this, but you also need some vegetable stock. Or you can use like chicken broth or whatever you have at home. First of all, we're going to wash and peel up potatoes and cut our onions in like little half circles basically. And once your potatoes washed and peeled, you gotta add it to a cooking pot, just like a regular pot. I'm gonna tell you what we do with the rest of the stuff. And you can add the onion to your vegetable or chicken broth or whatever you have at home. Just whatever stock you have, basically. You guys, I literally, I just cried. That onion, oh my gosh. If you have any tips, like I know you can wear goggles or something in order to like cut the onion, but if you have any other tips, like I know I'm using a really sharp knife and stuff, so all that's good, but like it stings in my eyes. Anyways, now I have all my potatoes peeled in here. What we're going to do is we're gonna add really cold water. Make sure that your potatoes are fully covered in water. Add a lid. And then let's actually turn this on high. So what you wanna do is you wanna boil your potatoes for about 15 minutes. Make sure that the water is boiling hot. And then once they're done, you drain them, you slice them, and you add them to either a bowl or just like back to the cooking pot. And meanwhile, I'm adding my onion right here to the vegetable stock we're just gonna have to cook for a little bit not on high though you better use like low to medium heat for that just a few minutes maybe two or three minutes that should be good my potatoes are all done right here now you need to slice them but make sure that you don't burn yourself because they need to be warm for this but not like hot, you know, so don't burn yourself and put them back into the pot right here. It should look something like this. Now it's time to actually make the dressing. I'm just adding the vegetable stock and the onion. We're just mixing that. I'm using some sugar, taking about two tablespoons. Thank you. 
I'm adding a teaspoon of salt. Now let's add two or three teaspoons of mustard. I'm adding about six tablespoons of vinegar. And I'm adding about five tablespoons of oil. Now let's mix this. This is what my potato salad looks like. I think I'm just gonna add some chives. You can add whatever herbs you wanna add if you want to give it that little extra. And this has to actually sit out for at least half an hour. I like to like have it sit out for two or three hours and then I can make my schnitzel meanwhile, which is why I started with the potato salad. And you can serve this sort of like warm, but I prefer it out of the fridge. It's just my personal choice. It's so hot outside, so I prefer it to be cold. I am literally standing like pretty much right inside of my fridge. So nice and cold there outside. It's hot, like scorching hot, like 90 degree hot and humid. What you're going to need for the schnitzel is some oil. Make sure that it's heat resistant, like rapeseed oil. I'm using rapeseed oil. There are other oils you can use, just don't use olive oil because that is not heat resistant and it develops harmful chemicals when you actually fry stuff in olive oil. Then you need some salt, you need some sort of meat. I am using turkey, you can use chicken, turkey, pork or veal or beef. You need some flour, you need some eggs, we still need to like... Um, Beat them a little bit so that they will mix, like the egg yolk and egg white. And some breadcrumbs, you need an extra plate in order to put the finished breaded schnitzel on there and you need a frying pan. Oh, and you need something like this in order to tender your meat. First of all, I am using this in order to tender my meat. So we're prepping the meat and then I'm adding a tiny little bit of salt to every single one of these pieces. We're going to cover our meat in these particular things. So first we're gonna cover it in flour, then egg, and then in breadcrumbs. This is what your schnitzel should look like before it's actually going into the frying pan. Should have a nice and even coat of bread crumbs. We're now heating up some oil. Make sure that you put quite a bit of it in there because otherwise you're not going to be able to fry your schnitzel. Mario just got here so we're finishing the schnitzel together. Let's make sure that they're golden from both sides, basically. So they're pretty much ready. I'm just putting them on a kitchen towel right here. Because they're really oily right now. See all that oil? I'm gonna have that soak off. And now we can plate them. They're a nice color, they look good. The breading looks good. So, let's place one here. Have a little lemon on top. It's an organic lemon because I'm putting it right on top of that.
Now let's add our potato salad. It looks very good. I hope it tastes good and some cranberry jam. And there you go. That's the finished dish. Here's a little close up. It's actually fairly easy. So that's the dish, that's schnitzel with potato salad. It serves four, that's as much as I made at least. If you have leftovers, you can just eat it the next day. You can eat it cold, it's really good cold too. And if you have like leftover schnitzel, you can just put it inside of like uh, two slices of bread and just eat it like a sandwich, add some tomatoes, some lettuce, and maybe like ketchup or mayonnaise or something. So that's my recipe. I know there are other recipes for like um, schnitzel out there, or Wiener schnitzel, but mine is maybe a little bit healthier because I'm not deep frying it. I'm just frying it basically. And I'm not using butter because that would be way unhealthier. It tastes really good with butter though, just saying. But yeah, that's my take on this dish. You guys, I just showed you how you can make your own Wiener schnitzel or Vienna schnitzel, whatever you want to call it. But this is a travel channel and I usually do like sightseeing tours all around and since I am talking about Austrian food, I know a lot of you have requested this video because, um, I mean, it's not a dish that is served internationally, I guess, but then a lot of you have heard about it and I do make my own schnitzel, so I just figured I could do this video for you guys. Since everyone kept telling me I only make healthy food when it comes to um, my channel when I do cooking videos. I know it's a travel channel and that won't change but I'm actually going on a trip this weekend so I wanted to film something fun for you before I actually show you that video of the trip. It's just a small trip, like it's just a little trip within Austria. And now let's go, let's explore Salzburg. I know some of you have seen this before but I have gotten a lot of recent subscribers so I wanted to show you guys what Salzburg is like and it's a very beautiful day outside. It's very hot though, so it's like in the 90s I believe. So let's actually go. I just grabbed my um, my bag and now let's go, let's explore. Let's see what Salzburg is like today. This is Mozart's birthplace right up there. This is in the middle of the city, so basically you can watch the Festspiele up there. The fest speeder is this big thing that's going on here in summer. It's basically like a play. Or actually more like a musical or opera. Basically like that, if that makes sense. There are even more seats right here and you can definitely like see the fortress up there, so this is called Fest im Salzburg, the fortress. My favorite spots here in Salzburg. It's just so beautiful. I'm a little out of breath. Oh, look, there's there is this thing that goes up and down the mountain. I actually walked up here. That back there, that mountain in the back is called Geistberg. It's like the house mountain of Salzburg and there's a fortress up there. This beautiful spot is called Richterhöhe. It's 
So it's on top of Mönchsberg. So Mönchsberg is this little mountain I just hiked up to. Berg in German means mountain in English. And it's just so beautiful. So if you're ever in Salzburg, it doesn't matter whether it's just for a day or longer. I would actually hike up here because you can see all over Salzburg. So you can walk along the mountain basically. To me, it's more like a hill, but yeah. It doesn't take long to get up here. I think it took me like maybe 15 to 20 minutes. So it's so gorgeous. I'm back home. I just got back from my walk. It was hot outside, you guys. But anyways, it was a nice walk. It was like nine kilometers long, which is about six miles. In case you were wondering, I hope you guys enjoyed this little sightseeing tour through Salzburg. I thought it would be fitting since I was actually showing you guys how to make Austrian food. I hope you're gonna enjoy this recipe. Like I said, it's my own recipe. There are different recipes. If you like to use a different recipe, that's totally fine, but this is mine and it's a little bit of a healthier touch since I'm not using butter and I'm not using that much oil. I'm not like deep frying it. I'm just frying it. I know there's a difference. Um, what I just thought of is if you want to make this recipe even healthier, you could just like put a little bit of oil on the outside of the schnitzel and then put it into the oven. That would be another take on this recipe, but this is just the way I like to make my Wiener Schnitzel. This is the way I like to make my potato salad. Sometimes I'll use mayonnaise, but I feel like this tastes better this way when you actually eat potato salad together with schnitzel. And the cranberry jam is really good as well. So that is really, really good. So over here we have something. I couldn't find another translation other than cranberries for it. They're called Breiselbeeren over here. So it's Breiselbeer Marmelade. So it translates to cranberries, but I feel like the ones over here are a little different. Just saying. In case you're not from Austria. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next week. I'm gonna go on a trip this weekend, so we're leaving tomorrow. So I need to finish this video tomorrow in the morning before we're actually taking off for another part of Austria. I hope you're excited for that vlog and I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, please make sure that you click on the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.